Good morning, everybody. A beautiful Saturday here in Minnesota. This is the Ask a Painter live show. I am Nick Slavic. I'm the host of the Ask a Painter live show. I am also the proprietor of the Nick Slavic Painting and Restoration Company. Uh, this show, the Ask a Painter live show, is a weekly live show on Facebook, archived to YouTube, and sometimes Instagram, where I use my almost three decades of experience as a craftsperson and a business owner to answer any questions and kind of give a look into the life of a professional painter and somebody who lives and breathes the craft. So today we're going to go over a few things. Uh, Trimaco contacted me, a company I know and love for their prep products, uh, and asked me to talk about their new line of anti-slip drop cloths, which I'm going to show you uh, three of them. And I'm going to show you some specific ways that I use them to protect our houses and also how I incorporate them into our proprietary uh, safety training. Um, we're going to talk about the Minnesota Masters classes that I did yesterday. Uh, and then we're going to talk about the PCA uh, at the end there. So number one, Trimaco. You guys know and love them. They have roots back to 1906. Again, longstanding brand over 100 years. Uh, a lot of these things are made in the USA too. So you're, port you're supporting a local company. Um, we know them from X board, floor protection, site containment, dust protection, things like that. This is just one very small segment of, of what they do, but it's a very important segment because these are very specific products that do a very specific thing insanely well. Three of them that I'm going to talk about today, kind of in order from near the stairs here and then here, um, Smart Grip. Smart Grip is, uh, is kind of an upgrade from a standard canvas. Like, yes, we know and love standard canvas. We've been using them forever. It's fine. But standard canvas doesn't do a couple very important things. Uh, they, they will have a little bit of spill protection, but only to a point, And they're not really slip resistant, which we'll talk about the safety training a little bit later. Um, there is a smart grip, there is stay put, and there is eliminator. So kind of in order of, of lighter duty, at least in, in my uh, uses, uh, to heavier duty, uh, smart grip which you see right here is sort of a, you know, it can actually be uh, disposable, but it's a really, really thin, really, really slip resistant and spill resistant um, sort of floor protection. Um, the ways that we use this sort of thing in our company are typically like this. When we have a hardwood stair section, things like that, this is way tougher than standard floor paper and things like that. Uh, you can tape it down. It stays there. Uh, it does have the anti-slip and anti-slip does another, uh, a couple of really interesting things, which is yes, it stops you from slipping, but that little bit of cushion, that little, little bit of, uh, anti-slip, the rubber, the rubberization of the back there actually helps protect the floors. And, and it's something that adds that little bit of cushion, um, standard canvas and floor paper will, will shift over the floor a little bit and you could actually burnish or abrade the floor stuff like this that doesn't move. Um, you know, will actually stay put and protect the floor in a different level of protection. Um, so a little bit thinner. Uh, this stuff is great. I actually tested this stuff out by dumping a quart of water over this stuff. It actually absorbed into the top layer, did not go through and contained it. So a lot of times if you just take standard plastic, like painter's plastic, put it on the floor, if you spill something on it, that's it. It's not going anywhere. It is sitting there until it evaporates. And that means you can step on it, move it around, and uh, then you can cause a lot more problems. So uh, it's got the absorbent top, leak-resistant back, and the grippy backing. Uh, it is 120% more slip-resistant than a standard canvas. So you're going to see an immediate improvement in the slip-resistant. Um, it's leak-resistant to paint and stain, which, again, I tested out. It's actually pretty cool to see it kind of absorb in there. So even when you ball it up, if you do have to get rid of it like that, it's still not the, – the fluid's not leaking out the side and things like that. Disposable as well. So, again – uh, you can definitely reuse this stuff, and we have in the past too, if you keep it clean and still in good condition. But if you do need to throw it away, you know, like let's say we're on a four to six week uh, long trim project and you've been walking over it, there's lots of dust on it, you've been cleaning it, vacuuming it. But in the end, it's just like, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's gone through its useful life after six weeks of walking over the top of it and, and finishing. You can ball this stuff up, and it actually tucks down into a nice little thing, and you can, and you can dispose of it. Uh, all made in the USA and comes in a whole bunch of sizes, you know, your 9x12s, your 12x15s, and your runner kind of things, uh, 4x15s. Uh, generally, in my company, when we talk about sort of like uh, drop cloths or any kind of floor protection, we have runners and we have sheets. Runners, to me, are anything that are skinnier and longer and sheets are something that is more square more rectangle and larger things like that so yeah you can see the the shiny side on the back here that is the uh, uh the anti-slip and the other side up here is the absorbent top and uh yeah cushion things like that kind of really really good product again i'm going to show you a couple different ways we do this but definitely if you have 
hardwood floors, if you have that kitchen uh, cabinet enamel paint there, um, this stuff, uh, when you put it on a stairwell like this and lock it down with tape, that's something that you can leave there for four to six weeks and constantly walk up and down and stuff like that. It's actually really cool. Um, okay, so then next in line here, we have the stay put. Stay put is really cool. Um, it's, it's sort of the upgrade from a standard canvas. It's got that beautiful trimaco, like super, super thick kind of canvas uh, on the top like that, that uh, basically <laughs> it's, it's tough to wear out. Um, in the fall, look for this though. This is going to be interesting because a lot of times we have hundreds of canvases for our, our businesses. And uh, when you fold these things up, here's the anti-slip kind of backing, the, the, the rubberized backing in the back. And sometimes when you fold these things up, they look like a standard uh, canvas. So what's coming in the fall, and you guys will love this, is a visual indication of what drop cloths are anti-slip. They're going to have orange stitching over the top of this here. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Because uh, then, again, when you're when you're looking through your van, you see that beautiful stack of folded drop cloths. You can just grab the anti-slip ones, things like that. Get this. Three times. 300% more anti-slip than a standard 8-ounce canvas. So that is huge. And we're going to get into my safety program in a little bit after we after we do this. But I'm going to tell you the reason. That's very important. So it's got actually three layers. This is a very, very sort of slim line uh, sort of profile. But it does have three layers. It's got that beautiful, durable canvas, which is actually a little bit absorbent for when something spills on it. In the middle, if, if you can hear that, there is actually a uh, an anti-leak layer in there. And then there's obviously the anti-slip layer in the back there. And you would think with a three-layer drop cloth, it's going to be really big and bulky, but it is not. It is nice and compact. And actually, they keep this fairly lightweight, too, which is a good thing. Because, again, if we're carrying 30 drop cloths into a house, that is quite an Olympic feat when you gather up 10 of those things and you try to carry that stack in there. So um, so it's got, that, uh, it's got the absorbent top, uh, the leak-resistant middle, and then the anti-slip. Um, so, uh, yeah, three times more uh, uh, anti-slip than a standard uh, drop cloth um, and stairwells as well, too, for those hardwood stairs. And again, comes in a variety of, of sizes. You've got your 9x12s, uh, your 4x12s, 6x8, and then even this kind of cool guy here. It's a 4x4 that we have on the floor. So if you're running through an office building or something, uh, linoleum floors, hardwood floors, whatever, and you're just doing door frames or something, it's kind of fun to take just a nice compact little square, fold that up nice, set it down in there, do your thing, move on, kind of a lightweight footprint in there as well. So kind of cool. Now, heavy duty, heavy, heavy duty. We have the last one here, the butyl drop cloths, the eliminators. That stuff is ultimate, <laughs> ultimate floor protection, but also comes with the anti-slip. So um, again, upgrade from your standard canvas, um, in my company, we still use a whole bunch of standard canvas. I mean, it, it's the, it's the bread and butter, but a lot of times you do need that anti-slip and that that's what these sort of options are for, uh, with that 200, you guys like data, just like I do 225% more anti-slip than a standard, uh, 10 ounce canvas drop cloth, uh, crack resistant butyl. So a lot of times the problem is with these rubberized drop cloths and they are super heavy duty here. I'll show you. So again, uh, the top like this grippy on the backside, you can see, uh, the anti-slip and the grip there, but super heavy duty. Um, yeah, uh, super spill resistant like that. It's super heavyweight and slip resistant. So again, if you have a, if you have a, the, the typical thing would be, you know, if you, if you're outside, you don't want something to blow away. You're on that composite deck. You lay that sucker down over the top. Just the weight of these things will a lot of times keep them in place like that and provide the anti-slip and more on those decks later too. Uh, durable and reusable and generally comes in a whole bunch of sizes as well. So now, interestingly enough, um, anti-slip drop claws are awesome, right? Uh, in the past, uh, craftspeople, apprentices, uh, and business owners like me, we've had to cobble together a whole bunch of random stuff to make sure that we don't slip. We've used anything from doormats, um, you know, those rubberized uh, sort of things you put under carpet so they don't slide around the thing. We have come up with all sorts of crazy things to keep our people safe. We're talking about rubs, stairwells, hardwood floors, uh, composite decking, things like that. And now it's nice that there is something where we don't have to cobble together this Frankenstein sort of thing. We do get all the benefits of our nice canvas, you know, a little bit of soft stuff over the floor. It's absorbent. It looks good. It's professional look. But also there's that spill resistance and there's the anti-slip. So when we bring people into our business, we actually have proprietary safety training. And one of the things, so listen, OSHA covers a lot of stuff, right? It doesn't cover everything. Uh, it's not all inclusive. It's not a perfect system of safety. So we have to create a whole bunch of unique safety things just for our business. 
Interestingly enough, one of the things that we focus on the most is our vehicles, loading ladders on the vehicles, and anti-slip and ladder safety. So these are the biggest things because again, when I'm looking at when I'm looking at areas to keep my people safe in my company, honestly, I'm looking at ladders on tops of vans, I'm looking at driving vans around, and I'm looking at people on ladders. That's the biggest attack vector in my company. And if I want to keep my people safe, I focus heavily on that. So my proprietary safety training has tons and tons and tons of super practical, tried and true, tested and retested over 30 years, stuff like this. One of the biggest ones is simple anti-slip protection. Again, we used to have to cobble all these things together, but now we have specific safety training that when we're on a roof, these things like this with the anti-slip backing, um, probably not the smart grip, but when you do stay put or butyl on a roof, when you're on top of a roof and you have like a butyl drop cloth up there like that, the weight of it will actually hold it down on the roof uh, very nicely. The stay put is wonderful because we do not want to mar shingles and Every, anybody who knows, even on a super grippy asphalt shingle like that, if you put a layer of canvas over there and stand, sometimes that can shoot out from under you. So when you add the anti-slip protection on that stuff, you get the benefit of a drop cloth, but you also have the anti-slip. So roofs are a huge thing there. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll lay down canvas over the roof, sometimes even duct tape them down, tack them down with duct tape so they don't go anywhere if it's a steep pitch. And then we'll put chicken ladders and sort of uh, rung ladders that we take apart and lay on top like that to move around like that. It just protects those shingles, keeps our people safe. The second way we use anti-slip drop claws a lot is hardwood floors and, and hard interior protection like that. And again, number one, 90% of the use is to keep our people safe. The second use, 10% of it is to keep those floors safe. It won't be moving around. So typically, if you think one of the most dangerous settings for me when I see somebody, you know, from Painterville on the internet uh, out there, they have a hardwood floor and they have one of those 25 foot foyers like that. And they have canvas down and then an extension ladder over the top of it. That to me is just a recipe for that stuff to shoot out. Yes, you'll probably be safe. Everybody's always done it, but you're still going to put a drop cloth down. You might as well put an anti-slip down. So like this here. So even, even though uh, a lot of our ladders nowadays have the rubber ends on that, we've been using them outside. They may have a little rock, a little gravel in them. They may have been chewed up over the years. They get a little hard in the sun. You want to, you want to lay down a good grippy drop cloth under those hardwood floors uh, to prevent those things from shooting out like that. Because the last thing you want to do is have one of your people injured. The second to the last thing you ever want happen is one of your people injured and then replacing a hardwood floor in a house too. So it just it compounds bad over bad like that. So that's the extension ladder kind of use. The other main use is composite decking. <laughs> for those of you who know, for those of you who ever uh, put extension ladders and things over composite decking to get to other parts of the house, there's a whole bunch of perils in that sort of thing. I would argue there's almost nothing more slippery than a brand new composite deck. That stuff feels like Teflon and yes, you can put your extension ladder with the rubber feet on top of it. I still would not trust it. But then in the past, you always run this risk of, well, listen, you can kind of, you can put the teeth down and wedge them in the cracks of one of the, between two boards and things like that. But composite decking, sort of when it's new and it gets real hot in the sun, you can mar it, you can scratch it, you can dent it, you can do things like that. And that stuff is not cheap. The problem is you scratch a board, you replace the board. Then the board doesn't match the rest of the board. So now you replace all the decking. Or you can just get an anti-slip drop cloth and put it underneath there. So again, in the past, we've cobbled together all sorts of Frankenstein things. We've even made wood platforms that we've clamped to the end of the deck with a bar across where the ladders do that. It's not as safe as this. The easiest, safest way to do it is to take an anti-slip drop cloth, lay it over the top, put your ladder, even step ladders and extension ladders over the top of it, test it to make sure it's good. Not only is it gonna be super safe for your people, it is actually gonna protect that decking really well. That is something that I do not hear enough about a lot of these anti-slip drop claws. They are, to, my, to me, they provide just as much floor protection as they do protection of our people in, in that sort of thing. And they're wonderful things uh, to use like that. Um, so let me just check my safety. We did the safety training, the hardwood floors. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh yeah, so even on stairwells too, a lot of this stuff is uh, 
we do lots of long-term trim projects. And yes, when you have a hardwood uh, sort of situation like this, we prefer the slimmest uh, sort of uh, floor protection you can. Canvas is not bad, but also if you do use canvas in a long-term trim project over carpet, a lot of times we'll tuck duct tape underneath the uh, baseboard and then tape canvas to it. But you have to do a really good job of vacuuming all that canvas because it will hold dust. And when you come around and walk and spray, it'll kick the dust up again. So a lot of times we used to use, we like to use the thinnest, uh, most non-fibrous sort of floor protection when we do that. But the problem is sometimes we have um, we have a, a, can, a carpet on stairwells. So that's when we end up using a heavier drop cloth like this. And I'll kind of show you an example and my little trick for, for doing the canvas on the stairs here too. So, so if you're going to be in a long-term project with carpet over the stairs like that, and I should say that this is, uh, this is our training module in our uh, Slavic shop here. So we are basically, uh, we're, we made a mock stairwell here behind it, which we'll show you some other time is a fake bathroom. And behind that is a fake bedroom. And this is actually where we train all of our apprentices on this stuff. So we have a uh, beautiful, thick, heavy, uh, butyl runner right here. You have the rubberized backing right there, the anti-slip, and then the nice uh, softer top like this. So typically what we'll do then when we have a carpeted stairwell like that, if we're just going to paint some walls, what we'll do is we'll lay this down and then I'll show you a little uh, trick there to get it all in there. Um, and then we'll just leave it if we're painting walls. But if we're going to be doing trim and everything else around it, we'll tuck duct tape down around all the skirt boards first, lay this down and then duct tape the duct tape to the actual canvas. And this is how I do it. <laughs> So I always like the bottom up. You just start from the bottom and you just wedge, 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 wedge like that instead of running from the top and you get a little slack in there. So if you guys want to know anything more about these anti-slip offerings, there is a link here. Uh, also, which is really cool, when you talk about like the data plus the feelings thing, the feelings is this keeps your people safe. And when I go to my master's classes around the country, we talk a lot about data plus feelings. I love the data because on Trimaco's website, you can actually watch a video of them scientifically testing how much more slip resistant this stuff is. So it's not one of those things where it's like, it's anti-slip. Well, what does that mean? They've actually go through scientific testing to show you a percentage of how much more and how many X multiples it is more slip resistant than other stuff, which is really cool. Data plus feelings. So I'm going to go through some questions right here, and then we're going to talk about Minnesota master's class recap. Then we're going to talk about the PCA as well. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching here. Gustavo, we, uh, we love using eliminators. Absolutely. That is, they are substantial, substantial drop cloths, which is interesting because you would think that drop cloths would be one of the more disposable things that we have as a painting company. Honestly, I have, when you buy really good floor protection like this, they last a long time. We usually go for the heaviest duty, the best quality. I still have some from my father before me. Uh, that we still use that are super heavy. And yes, there's paint all over them. They're almost art projects at some point, but they, they are so substantial uh, that you just can't get rid of them. They do their job and uh, the good stuff uh, keeps your people safe and absorbs all those little paint spills and, and things like this. So uh, Evan Bombay, Bomboy, how's it going, man? Oh, Holly Barlow, how's it going? I finally got to meet Holly yesterday. Uh, thank you so much for the class yesterday. It was such a huge blessing uh, to me and my business. Uh, very eye-opening about the stats. <laughs> Time to go do some math, not my favorite, and go be a business owner, not just a job owner. Uh, I love talking with Holly. Uh, Holly is a bright mind in the industry, and she actually brought one of her employees yesterday. I cannot thank you enough for the awesome conversation yesterday. And uh, yes, it's July. It's a beautiful day in Minnesota, and Holly's actually from Wisconsin, and in Wisconsin. And we should all be painting, right? But Holly and a whole room full of people took a day off to spend some time to further themselves and their businesses and, and share some knowledge with me. And I'm grateful. And I, I hope everybody received value like Holly did, Sue.
All right. Tony, how's it going, man? Tony Joseph? Absolutely. <laughs> Gustavo, how do you go about washing the eliminators? So honestly, what you do is if you need that, and eliminators are the super heavy butyl ones like this. If you have to wash them, a lot of times, honestly, with our drop cloths, we shake them out and clean them. Uh, when we have to wash them, uh, once in a while, uh, we will take all of our drop cloths and either hose them off, dunk them in like a cattle uh, watering bin full of soap and water, and then dry them in the sun. Uh, honestly, a really good shaking out will do it. Uh, uh, once in a while, a crew will have a really dusty interior trim job, you know, that four to six week trim job. And what they'll do is just go in the lawn behind the house or somewhere or in the lawn in the shop, and they'll just spend a lot of time shaking those things out, refolding them, and they'll be fine like that. If you have to wash them, there's a lot of ways to do that. You can certainly go down to the local laundromat and do that stuff, but you have to be really careful about those machines. Uh, canvases get really heavy um, with um, anything, with any sort of rubberized thing like this. You want to be, uh, I would not put those in any dryers. What I would do is, uh, especially with the butyl ones like this, I would lay that sucker out in uh, in a driveway. It, like in our, in our shop, we got this beautiful blacktop area here. I would lay that sucker out and I would take a garden hose and a shop broom. And if you need to dump a little soapy water on the top, whisk it around with the broom, hose it off and let it dry out there. That's how I would do that stuff. But honestly, most of our drop cloths, we just give them a good shaking out every once in a while. Uh, part of our standard operating procedures for all of our interior painting is a white glove cleaning at the end. You will never eliminate dust completely, whether it's dust from the site or a tiny bit of specks of dust from a previous job site. So our, our standard process is to Swiffer sweep vacuum the floor anyway. So just kind of eliminate that stuff. <laughs> Beach house painting. They're like diapers for your floor. Listen, man, that is not, that is no joke. It feels so. Uh, yeah, in diapers, actually, there is a interesting sort of chemistry in there. There's a coagulant. There's a chemical in there that when it touches water, it coagulates. Not unlike the things they put on certain tapes uh, to stop uh, bleeding on the edges and stuff like that. This stuff, no chemical, but the absorbent top. Uh, I Again, I tested this stuff out because what I wanted to know is on that super thin kind of disposable sort of stuff, uh, super durable but super thin, I wanted to know how uh, spill resistant it was. So again, took the quart of water, dumped it on top. 30 seconds later, it was wet. But it absorbed in there, and what it didn't do is that puddly thing. Then when we try, you know, imagine you dropped uh, some paint on a stairwell like this, and if you try to ball it up, sometimes it'll run and go and still get on, you know, the carpet and things like that. This stuff, it just kind of like spill contained it, and then you can ball it up and get it out of there, which is super cool. So nothing dripped out of it like that. So Evan Bomboy, one time I slipped on a drop cloth uh, that was on a hardwood floor, ten foot tele telescopic ladder. After that day. I only use the stay put on interior. Listen, man, it only takes you. <laughs> oh, man. If you ever want your heart to jump, <laughs> you have a ladder move uh, when you're up on the top of it. And the higher that ladder is, the higher your, uh, the more your heart will jump. And you'll only do that a few times before you start making really, really good safety things. So there's a whole bunch of things we do to keep our people safe. Honestly, this is one of the simplest things you can do. Um, you know, grass, mulch roofs, things like that. That's all fine. You know, you can put teeth down on ladders. You can even drive a spike, a big metal spike into the bottom of your ladder to keep it from kicking out in the bottom. But you don't have that option on a hardwood floor and things like that and on stairwells. So that's what uh, that's what we end up using here. Actually, by our standard operating procedure, um, our standard kit, our standard thing of tools and equipment for a crew actually has nonstick drop cloths in there like that. It's so important to us to have that. So <laughs> Todd Hill, Saturday morning SOP coffee, ask a painter and cinnamon rolls. Dude, I love it, man. Also, Todd, we should probably hop on and ask a painter live one of these days, too. I think it's long overdue. Uh, talk a little hunting, talk a little fishing, and then, uh, yeah, talk a little uh, talk a little painting as well, too. So uh, email me a reminder. Let's get you on the schedule for a show here. Oh, here we go. Evan Bomboy, do you ever worry about the stay put damaging shingles? No, uh, actually. So I would actually say that they... If you're worried about shingles, the more anti-slip you use, the less you're going to mess with shingles. Now, depending on where in the country you are, um, in Minnesota, we still get super hot, super cold. And, and in the summer, we do have to worry about shingles getting greasy when they heat up a little bit. You can mar the grit on the top and you can kind of imprint and things like that. So you still have to be careful. The more anti-slip protection you have up there, the heavier the protection, the less you're moving around on shingles, the better for the shingles and the better for you. So no, this is standard operating procedure for that kind of stuff. So 
V, how's it going? Good to see you. All right, Anthony Cade, good morning, man. How are you? Ah, Jay Osborne, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. Good morning, Tony. <laughs> oh, David Coles, how's it going, man? Coffee with Nick on Saturday morning, learning from Calgary. Listen, man, I am waiting for that dang Canadian border to open up. Two reasons. I want to go see a lot of my friends in the industry. I want to do some master's classes up there. But also, um, I, I, I love Canada, man. Uh, it's been about three years now since I've been on a float plane trip up into the wilderness where they drop you off and there's nothing around you. And you basically just interact with nature for a while. Uh, and you get around by canoe, and I miss that dearly. And uh, the second we can do it, I'm getting back up there and doing that again. So look forward to all that stuff, guys. <laughs> oh, Dave Pine, how's it going, man? Good morning, Nick. Uh, I have a drop cloth that I call the X-ray blanket. Uh, the thing weighs 75 pounds. <laughs> all that's, oh, I'm trying to see more of the thing there. Used for shutters and doors for years. Yeah, man. Listen, again, we've had to. Yeah, oh, like those lead blankets you put over the top. We've had to cobble together all sorts of stuff. No more people. This is a professionalized industry. It will be even more professionalized industry. There's awesome stuff that'll last you a very long time that will keep you safer than all the Frankenstein-y stuff that we used to cobble together for this. So it's a wonderful time to be a craftsperson here. So uh, Seth Hostetter, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> uh, David, we want you here. I have people uh, to take you fly fishing. Uh, we'll make it happen. Listen, man, I am, I am all for that stuff. I am all for that stuff. New adventures. So, all right, everybody, uh, Minnesota Masterclass recap. So yesterday, Sherwin-Williams was nice enough to underwrite uh, a whole day of master's classes. Uh, we had it in the South Metro here, uh, just outside of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Full capacity room, awesome people. Um, Sherwin-Williams does it right. Sherwin-Williams are pros, and they know how to put on an awesome event. Uh, we had a beautiful catered breakfast. Food truck showed up for lunch with some of the best food I've had in a long time. We went over the estimating master's class, which again is one of the, I can offer something in that estimating master's class that you can't get anywhere else, which is market rate data on what people charge in your industry. What we do is a really cool experiment where we all estimate the same project with very tight kind of controls and scope and things like that. We do it anonymously. And before the end of the class, I actually aggregate them into a spreadsheet and tell you what the average sale price for that thing is in all your market area. It gives you a peek into something that, um, uh, you know, a website like Zillow can give you into house sales. You can just wander around neighborhoods on Zillow and see what average house prices are for comparisons. We don't have any comp or comparison thing that we can do uh, for, for residential painting for the most part. So I can give people super sneaky insight into all this stuff. Now, this isn't one of those things where you weaponize it and use it against your people. What it is, is you can check yourself against uh, where you are in business, what your plans are, what, what stages you're going through, how your pricing is, if you have enough work, your close ratio, your average job size, and you can start comparing it. Another thing I do is I like the outliers, which I give people the highest price, excuse me, somebody charged in the room and the lowest price. We list how much materials are going to be used for each high and low, and then how much time it takes high and low. And I will tell you this, I've done this for a lot of major metro areas in the country, and it is consistently inconsistent, which means that everybody's, the, differ, the difference between the highest price in the room and the lowest price of the room is usually more than 60%. It's huge. It's more than 60%. And it's, when I go to major metro areas, it's almost always a 60% different, which is insane. You would think that these self-selecting, thoughtful group of people would all kind of be you know, traveling around the same price. It is not true. It's a very interesting experiment to go through. Um, I still have some thinking to do about all that stuff, but I've been collecting that data from major market areas for years now. And uh, yeah, it's kind of eye-opening to see that part of sort of stuff. So, <laughs> oh, Rick Mixell, only you can make a show about drop claws worth watching. Listen, man, when you're talking about the safety of your people, like I love, I love problems and I love simple solutions or problem. Solution or a problem? You want to keep your people safe and you don't want to buy floors and decks for people. Simple solution. It's easy. Available at Sherwin-Williams. It's, it's, uh, it could not be easier. The place that we buy all our paint from anyway, it's right there for you. So, uh, Kevin Kopic, sorry, we got fly buzzing around here. Do your crews work Saturdays regularly? No, they do not. We actually, not only do we not work Saturdays, we do not work Fridays. We do a four day work week. So in my company, we have unlimited overtime, but we also are a family first company where if you want 
time with your family. I respect that greatly. Um, I put in a whole ton of hours every week, but if my people only want to do 40, that's fine with me. Uh, certainly the extra hours are there if they want to, um, you know, uh, attain some certain things in life, but, uh, it's, it's, you can't, well, I shouldn't say that it's there for them. Interestingly enough, by Minnesota law, you can force people to work overtime. Uh, but that's not a good boss thing to do and I've never done it. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, Josh Payton invested in a stock of cover grip drops worth every penny. Listen, this is one of those things where it's not like, Hey, we used them for a couple jobs and threw them away. They wore out. Uh, they will probably outlive you and most of the people in your company. Uh, we have we have canvas here where the only time that we have to eliminate a canvas where we not use it anymore is if a five gallon bucket spills in it. And then you have that super hard, crusty thing that can't be folded up anymore. Two options. We either roll that thing up and throw it away or we dry it out in the sun, cut that area out. Then we have a couple four by fours or smaller drop claws like that. So it's it's uh, yeah, it's it's absolutely fun. And this just like anything else, an investment. And, uh, you know, things like fancy power tools are great. They're investment. They'll probably improve your productivity. There's not a lot of things that you can invest in in your company that consistently keep your people safe and safeguard your job sites uh, from, uh, from damage and things like that. So, all right. If you love deep drop cloth talk and the science of all this stuff and scientific tests to see how more slip resistant these are than standard canvas, you have come to the right place. The Ask a Painter Show and the PCA, we share a lot of the same core values. Um, oh, the second master's class I did in Minnesota was professionalizing the industry. The PCA, myself, Ask a Painter, and the people all associated with this are very into the professionalization of the industry. Jason Paris, close friend in the industry of, me, uh, of mine, he is the chair, he is the board chair of the PCA. I happen to be the vice chair. We have started down an initiative for the next couple of years. And if we are reelected, uh, we're going to have a, a couple of years here to see this initiative through. Our initiative and what we think will actually move the needle in the entire industry uh, is professionalization. Now, that's a vague term, right? But it's doing all the basic things that real businesses do everywhere else. It's not a mystery. All the, all the friction, all the pain, all the suffering you feel in running your business can basically be eliminated or reduced to the point where it's not a problem anymore by a simple couple steps of professionalization. Simple doesn't mean it takes no work. Simple means it's there for you. And there's two things that make entrepreneurs and business owners and craftspeople world-class, grit and information. Uh, the grit, we cannot give you. We can try to inspire. We can get you excited about things, but the grit comes from somewhere inside of you. The information, that's all free and that's all here for you. And that's the goal of Ask a Painter. That is the goal of the PCA. And so we're here for you guys. There is nothing that you're experiencing that hasn't been solved by somebody else out there. If you want to connect with those people and find those solutions, it's the PCA, folks. That's just what it is. So let's uh, let's look through last couple comments here. Uh, Justin Fry got a letter from the PCA saying professionalism would be added to accreditation. Lots more to follow. We don't have an official uh, thing to give you guys yet. But uh, behind the scenes, uh, Mr. Paris is putting in an insane amount of work. We're all putting in an insane amount of work to get this thing through. We're also still in the works of getting through apprenticeship, training, SOPs, all sorts of like uh, painter level training stuff out there as resources for the industry too. There's a whole bunch of other cool stuff that a lot of people don't know about with the PCA, which is they have the Netflix of painting content in the industry. It's called Overdrive. Uh, it's a whole bunch of curated content, uh, by topic, by people, by things like that. Um, they have standards, industry standards. Uh, they're free actually. So you can go to the PCA's website and look up the standards. It's one of our most popular features. Uh, one of the things about the standards is, uh, have you ever had a client get an led flashlight and go right up to a wall and inspect it? Uh, there's a standard on how far away you should be to inspect a properly painted surface and under what lighting conditions. It's all there folks. Uh, also, they have the estimating guides as well. It's a two-part series. I have in my office. It's thick. It's robust. It's got production rates, all sorts of other stuff. Again, this information is out there for you. Do you have enough grit to go seek it out and do something with it? That's basically the key of what we're trying to do here. So, all right. Yaren Vanderberg. We use recycled cotton uh, from anti with an anti-skid bottom. Paint drops fall on, but not through. 25 mil. Oh yeah, uh, Joran's from the Netherlands. So yeah, different, uh, different. I'd be curious if you could uh, get these things out there too. Standards save me at times. Absolutely, V. Standards are not a bad thing. So, 
All right, everybody. Um, thank you for watching this morning. Um, you would not think that drop claws are an exciting issue, but it's something we care about deeply. They are actually specifically listed in our standard operating procedures, both standard floor protection, floor paper, rubberized floor protection, and most importantly, a huge portion of our safety training is this, which is anti-slip drop claws. So I would urge you, if you do not have them in your company, it's going to save you uh, from replacing floors and decks in your business. It'll also keep your people safe. Links there. And obviously, if you guys need anything from me, you know how to get a hold of me. And I'm about to check out on family time. So thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, I really do appreciate all this. We passed the five-year anniversary of this. Uh, this show has been a blessing to me, and it's connected me with some of the greatest people in the industry. Thank you guys so much, and we will see you next week.